Hello and welcome to Pim Ponders About Stuff. Been a while since I've done one of these. There isn't any particular reason for that, other than me not really knowing how to fill the void of this series. However, now that I've stopped making video essays, I feel that I can give this series its proper place again. By the way, I know that the title of this video seems a bit like a video essay, but this is not really a video essay. I don't have any sources or conclusions or anything like that. Consider this more just me thinking out loud. In any case, today I want to talk about autism and relationships. Specifically, I want to talk about romantic or sexual relationships. I will touch on platonic relationships as well, but that's not really my focus for now. The main reason I'm making this video is because I found resources for autistic people regarding the subject of romance and sexuality to be drastically lacking. I have been running through the Dutch mental health care system for over a decade now, and while I've had many types of therapy or support that I found to be helpful, the subject of romance and sexual relationships is something in which I found support to be basically non-existent. I think that this is kind of a big issue because over the years I found more and more that I want to have some kind of romantic or sexual relationship with someone. But I've also found it increasingly difficult and frustrating to get us off the ground and navigate my way through this. Now... I know that as always this might not apply to everyone, but I've done some digging around and spoken to other autistic people about this, and I don't think that this is an issue that is unique to me. I am well aware that this is a bit of a big issue with society in general as well. We have more progressive views on subjects like sex nowadays, but I've still found that discussing romance and sex is kind of considered to be a taboo, even nowadays. I blame the Christian fundamentalists for this one, to be honest. This is only compounded for demographics on which society as a whole looks down on or does not really give a shit about. Demographics like disabled or neurodivergent people. I don't think that it would be controversial of me to suggest that society as a whole tends to look down on people like us. After all, our capitalist economy determines your worth in society by how much you can work. And if you cannot really work, then people will at best have pity on you and at worst consider you to be some kind of useless eater. In any case, this means that many disabled and neurodivergent people are robbed of agency in their lives and kind of alienated from most of society. This is a whole big subject that I don't really want to get into right now, but if you want to know more and you have 40 minutes to spare, then John the Duncan made a video about this subject recently that I would highly recommend. In any case, this presents autistic people with more than a few obstacles in regards to romance. Autistic people, like myself, kind of have the reputation of being bad at communication. And while there is some grain of truth in that, I think it's less that we are bad at communicating and more that neurot neurotypical people are just too vague at communicating exactly what they want from us. I've touched upon this a bit before in the past, but one of the main reasons why a professional job is so difficult for me is because a lot of managers and other workers often give me some vague assignment and then expect me to know exactly what they want. For example, I could be given the assignment of cleaning out a boiler or something, and I would then ask questions like, how do I do that? What kind of tools can I use? How do I use said tools? Etc. 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 The issue is not that I cannot do these things. The issue is that the assignment that I get is just too vague. This issue also applies to approaching someone romantically. I have been on many different kinds of dating sites and dating apps, and those rare times that I actually managed to talk to someone, the communication was usually vague and didn't really go anywhere. I cannot really tell by context clues what you want from me. You're going to have to be more specific with your needs and wants. This also applies to conversations in real life. I think another big issue is just the fact that I often don't really have a clue how to even approach someone I like in this matter. Now, my heart basically tells me that I should just be honest and just be open about it. 
this is something I've done a few times in the past. But in my experience, people often dislike this kind of honesty or directness. The way we approach each other romantically often has a whole lot of subtext and unspoken or unwritten language to it. And this makes it difficult for people like us to really find out or figure out if someone likes us or not. I've had a few times in the past that I found out that someone fancied me romantically and had been throwing me context clues and subtext. This could be things like body language or certain phrases and so on. This just went completely over my head. On the flip side, this can make finding someone you like quite difficult as well. I've had a few times where I just don't really, did not really know how to approach someone like this. Hell, I still don't know how to do this. This is only exacerbated if you, have, if you happen to have some form of social anxiety as well. I am relatively social nowadays, and I have less issues with meeting new people than I used to, but this was not always, not always the case in the past. I was often terrified of meeting new people or getting into unknown social situations. This already limits the amount of people you can meet in general, let alone a potential partner or partners. Now, I realize that there's not one correct answer to all of this. And I also realize that this is something many neurotypical people struggle with as well. But I find the fact that there's completely nothing out there to offer some kind of insight or tips or anything to just be kind of disheartening. I've done some digging around in other groups online and ask other autistic people for their experience. And while there were a few people that had no issues and good for them, the overwhelming consensus that is I find that it was extremely difficult to near impossible for an autistic person to get any kind of relationship. Our best bet was basically to date either another autistic person who knows how we work or someone that was familiar with autism, and even in those cases, it would often not work out. Which brings me to the second part. Finding a relationship is one thing. Keeping it and maintaining it is a whole, a whole other wheelhouse. Relationships, in my opinion, require honesty and transparency to work. It is best for two people, or multiple people in the case of a polyamory relationship, to be transparent with each other so that you know exactly how to fix things when things go wrong. This would be perfect for autistic people since we prefer directness and transparency, but reality does not always work this way. I've been told in many cases, probably to do, due to that aforementioned unwritten subtext, that many neurotypical autistic pairings fail due to one of the two keeping information from each other. Another issue is understanding. The sad truth of the matter is that in my experience, most neurotypicals frankly don't care about understanding autistic people. Now, obviously, part of that is them just being unable to understand autistic people because, you know, they're not autistic. But I've also heard more than a few stories about autistic people getting rejected because of their autism. Many neurotypicals will not want to have an autistic partner, and while we obviously cannot force people to date autistic people, I do feel that society as a whole does tend to, to put us on the bottom of the desirability chain in this regard. Now, sex is another aspect where I wish I had gotten a bit more guidance in. S sex is a very personal topic that is pretty difficult to really talk about, but any guidance in this regard was basically non-existent for me. I did get sexual education in high school, but honestly I might as well have gotten nothing with how bad this was. I got a t small 10 minute talk about STDs, but that was about it. Nothing about making each other feel comfortable, nothing about consent, nothing about how to approach certain sexual, sexual subjects, nothing about queer sexuality or alternative sexualities, absolutely nothing. When I first started living on my own in my early 20s, this meant that I was woefully unprepared for what I was about to undertake. I will not go into too much detail, because, since it is quite honestly very personal and more importantly no one's business, but when I started living on my own, I started to, let's call it, experiment with sex. Experiments that did not really go well. To make a long story short, I lost a lot of money and, in, and, and ended up giving myself a minor trauma that I had to treat with EMDR therapy a few years later. The main reason this all happened was because at the time I had a relatively poor impulse control. And I felt that I had reached the age when I should just, you know, do sex stuff or like that. 
Like it was something that was expected from me from society. Now this impulse control has gotten better with training and with getting to know myself better afterwards. But I feel that if I had gotten better sex ed in my teenage years, then things would not have turned out the way that they did. Now poor sexual education is a problem in society in general. But I feel that people that have poor impulse control, like for example autistic people, tend to be more vulnerable to getting scammed or having a poor experience with sex because of this. This also kind of ties in in how we stigmatize sex work. A subject I have encountered a few times is that of so-called snoozelzorg. This is a Dutch term that does not translate well to English, but the best translation I can give would be cuddle healthcare. Basically, this is specialized sex work meant for people who have some form of disability or are, are, or are otherwise unable to get their sexual needs fulfilled, but still benefit from having sex on a regular basis. This is something sex workers and therapists want to get more widespread and covered by healthcare for years now, but there's just a constant pushback politically and from society. This, in combination with the fact that regular sex work is often an extremely shady and dangerous business for both clients and workers, means that for most people it just isn't really an option. Honestly, the way society looks at sex is just really goddamn idiotic in my opinion. We idolize sex in media and joke about it everywhere, but the moment we need to change stuff and have an actual serious conversation about how we as a society approach sex, it all falls on deaf ears and the subject is just brushed from the table. We seriously need to change the way how we look at sex and how we treat sex workers in general if we want to make any progress in normalizing sex positivity. Forcing it into the gray area of society like it is now helps no one. And I think that this is really the crux of the issue. Sex is a gray area. It is something almost everyone is involved with one way or another, but it's not spoken about or really given the same kind of attention that we should. It is either a taboo or is given all the wrong kind of attention, either overhyped or over unnecessarily demonized. This makes it a difficult subject to navigate as a neurotypical person, let alone as an autistic person. I really wish that there will be a time in the near future that we talk about sex and disability or neurodivergence in a more mature manner, because I find the complete lack of resources to be disheartening and hopeless. Uh, and I think that is all for me. Um, I know that this, is, that this is a bit of a rambling video, but I do feel that we could use some improvement on the subject of autism, sex and romance. Now, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all some other time.